Labour have an idea. Let's speak to former Special Advisor to Michael Gove and get his take on all of this, because Labour are saying this is because it's a Tory low-wage economy and they're bringing in foreign workers because they can pay them 20% less and they want to scrap that 20% less rule. Is that, has that got legs? Um, well, good morning. Good morning. Um, I, 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 <laughs> Straight no, in, sorry, Charlie. No, no, <laughs> um, no, no very happy to. But, um, I think um, there's partly, you've got to view this, I think, in, in two ways. So there is the um, uh, low-skilled jobs where you have got people that have come traditionally from the EU uh, that have come in to fill those roles. But there are other roles, particularly within the NHS, where it takes a long time to train a doctor or a nurse. Uh, we have now people coming from outside of the EU that mm. are filling those jobs. So... Um, I don't think it's simply the case to say, well, uh, it's about wages in a low-skill economy. Mm. It's broader than that. Mm. I think the figures that will come out today... Sorry, sorry, I don't see what the difference is there. You're still getting cheap labour from around the world. Believe me, I've spent an awful lot of time that I didn't want to spend in hospitals um, in the past year. And all I saw were Indian, Malaysian, um, Filipino. My goodness me, if they took the Filipinos out of this country, they would be, everything would grind, grind to a halt. Mm. But we are using labour from around the world, not EU, but we're still... Is, is there a pay differential still going on? Well, um, you'd certainly not hope so in the NHS, but, um, but there may be circumstances where, if it is um, low-skilled workers, so um, people that are working in restaurants, people that are working in the construction industries, mm. um, where uh, there might be more of a competitive economic approach to it. But I don't think... Uh, uh, you can simply sort of turn on a tap because even if you are doing uh, construction, for example, uh, that still takes a long time uh, or a certain amount of time to train somebody up. You can't just suddenly say, uh, no, we're going to stop somebody coming in to fill that role uh, because there might be, you know, there are levels of unemployment in the country which we need to address and the government needs to address. But you can't simply just say, well, that job won't get filled yeah. here because you need to wait for a yeah. British worker to be able to do it. Um, you have to look elsewhere. Yeah, it was interesting, those figures last week that showed that post-Brexit, this huge increase in the number of workers being imported from uh, Asia, particularly India and from Africa, because to make up of this shortfall in workers coming in uh, from our nearest neighbours in, in the European Union. Um, but, you know, is the big problem here net migration or is the actual problem trying to get British people back to work? I mean, how do we frame this? Is this a problem about pulling up the drawbridges and saying we don't want foreigners, or is this about us being lazy? Well, um, I, I think you're, you're, you're absolutely right. There are two things here, and I think that's why for um, the clips that you played earlier on, you know, successive prime ministers have you know, obviously um, advocated getting migration down to the tens of thousands. Um, now, that's something that, um, uh, depending on what the figures look like today, seems uh, a, a bit far off. But over time, I think everybody will want to see migration, um, uh, the good migration that you talked about earlier, to see that come down. Yeah. Because that does have an impact on public services and uh, schools. And you know, if, if it takes a while to integrate people into communities, you do see those tensions yes. that we've seen elsewhere. But Charlie, sorry for interrupting sure. you again. I mean, it, it's a fascinating subject. But there are two trains of thought, two Conservative Party as well. There were those who will say, look, we need people who are skilled. We need people to fill the gaps here. We need this to keep the country ticking. Let's get all these folk in. And then there will be a whole other sector who will say, what? Foreigners? No, absolutely not. We don't want anybody like that. There's a need and there's a desire, isn't there, um, which conflict against each other. Yeah, it, it, totally right. And I think, look, the headline figures when they come out at 9.30, I think will be quite shocking to a particular mm. uh, Conservative that says this is you know, outrageous, that the you know, government and the country has lost control of its borders. And I don't think that's the case at all, because I think the government, what it'll have to do after 9.30 is really explain those figures. So, for example, 174,000 people um, uh, are coming to the UK on the back of the Ukrainian scheme. Nobody would say that that's the wrong thing to do. That was absolutely the right thing. And it's a big do. figure. And it's a big figure. Mm. I think another 136,000 are people who have uh, a dependence of students. Now, that's something that the Home Secretary mm. has decided that you know, we can control those numbers coming in. So those numbers will come down because of the changes that the Home Secretary announced So it's a bumpy yesterday. year. So it's a bumpy year uh, on the back of uh, That's a Ukraine. good description. It's a good um, positive way of looking at it. <laughs> it's a bumpy year. But what's absolutely crucial is, um, uh, is for the government to explain those figures clearly mm. and make exactly this, the, the case that you've just made, is that you know, immigration yes. on its own is clearly not a bad thing. We're a very diverse, competitive uh -huh. economy. Uh -huh. We need people to fill those vacancies where they're not being filled, mm. yes. where they could be yeah. filled in the long yes. term. But it's those training opportunities, particularly uh, in the NHS, that you need to make sure okay. are being filled. Okay, and I understand where Labour are coming from, and they're saying low-wage economy, and we will fill that gap in terms of what the people are being offered. But when I think when I was a teenager myself and I thought jobs you could do, 
jobs that depended, the harder you work, the more you earned. For instance, if you washed cars, if you cut grass, um, uh, if, you, if you worked in a bar and you did so many, so many hours. So it didn't really matter what you were on per hour. If you did more hours, you got more money for it at the end of the day. And I think what we're concerned about, Isabel and I, and we're putting this question out to you today, is... Is there a sector of the country, particularly young people, what do they do for money nowadays? Well, it's on the front of the Telegraph. Millions on jobless benefits do not have to seek work. And it's costing because us £27 the billion a year. Yeah, they're on benefits, because the benefits and they are too don't good. have to even seek a job. And that is a huge expense but to the taxpayer. And we need to ask why. Why when, aren't when I, working? When I was a teenager, when I w was young, and you would be looking for that sort of casual labour job because you wanted a new pair of jeans, you wanted to see up for a car you know okay the car costs you 500 quid but you know that's what you that's what you were doing where is the hunger and the enthusiasm for people to earn extra and do extra and that I mean that hasn't moved from society I mean you go to a restaurant now if you if you do go out to take away anything and the, the price of food is absolutely horrendous. So, young people, not that any of you will be out of bed yet, but if any of your parents or grandparents are, are watching, what do you do for money these days? Don't you want it? Is that a song as well? Don't, well, it's not Tina. Don't you want it? I'm only doing her. Tina songs today. Da, da, Sorry, da, da, nothing da, da. else. Who are you saying that? Da, 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 don't da, ask me da, that. Da, da, da. Human League. Da, da, da. Yeah, don't, yeah, in the 80s, yeah. Da, 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 da. Don't know. Same era. Anyway, Charlie, I wanted to talk about mm. Boris. I don't know if we've got time. Have I got of course time? Of time. Let's do what you want. OK, um, big row has erupted. Not yeah. only has Boris said, get rid of your own lawyers, I'm going to pay for my, the big guns. Mm. Um, but it seems as though um, th there's a big row and they want to see the private WhatsApp messages between Boris and people like your former boss, Michael Gove, and, and that's seen as a big infringement of privacy. Yeah, and I think, um, look, you know, COVID was you know, horrendous for everybody. You know, there were certain decisions that were taken at pace where I think it's absolutely right an inquiry is taking place, led by Baroness Hallett. Um, and uh, I think it's right as part of that inquiry that she has all of the information that she can have to um, point out to the government where, OK, you've made decisions in haste, where we just need to do better next time should we see anything like this mm. again. So mm. it's important that she has all the information uh, that, 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 that she requires. But there will be certain circumstances where I think in order to make decisions openly, and you know, what you don't want to do is a have a situation whereby ministers are too afraid to communicate with each other well, because yes. of the, yes. uh, the, the, yes. the, the, the privacy well, that you need Hancock to maintain. find out... Well, as exactly. well, there'll be a few ministers and former ministers who will be sweating at the thought that this could go into the public domain. Yes, and but I think you know, if, if some of it does need to be in the public domain. I think the way in some of those WhatsApp mm. messages were revealed under Matt Hancock, I think, demonstrated a, a public interest. A public interest, mm. but there has to be that protection. I think for ministers, regardless of the party, regardless mm. of the government who's you know, of the day, they need to make decisions. They need that privacy at times to have those discussions, which sometimes you miss the context if it's all in a WhatsApp. Well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Charlie, do you know what? If I was an employer. I'd give you a job. I would give you a job because I think he's a very calm man. Yeah. He relays things, controversial issues, and you do it in a very calm way. And it'll come as no surprise when we were talking about jobs that you did as, as younger people. Charlie took up a weekend job as... I was a football referee. See, which you have to have a certain temperament, <laughs> don't you, for that? You, you do, yeah. you do. The, um, uh, I think you know, it was described as a swan which sort of glides across, the, but the legs are sort of kicking under. Yeah. Well, I'd imagine being <laughs> but, a special um, advisor but, to Michael Gove is very similar. I mean, one of the most effective politicians mm. in, the, in the modern era. Well, he, um, he, he was a brilliant boss and um, uh, great to work for, but you're only, um, uh, I think, as uh, calm as the people you are around you. Yes. So you're and were you oh, well, I'm doomed something. then. <laughs> <laughs> were you quick to flash a card or not? Uh, um, was that the last resort or were you, were you a card flasher? Uh, I, I was. Uh, I've never been a flasher. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> but um, oh. or accused of being one. But I think, like, it depends on depends on the situation. I think if you know you've got a bit of a, a heated match, then you know you've got to stamp some things out pretty soon on and set the Charlie. Time. Otherwise, you let things. Every run. day I sit in this program, um, it's like yellow on constant <laughs> standby. I mean, it could be a red, but you know, I have to be have to flash the cards. <laughs>